Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you for having me. So i uh, welcome everyone. It's great to see so many people logged in this afternoon. We have Maura. Let's see. We've got a few more people that came in. Miguel, welcome. Well, thank you for joining us. So again, I am Melanie Burdick. I am a registered dietitian with the giant food and I am part of the healthy living team. And at the end of today's presentation, I'll give you a little bit more detail about what we do at giant and how we can help you. So I'm also along with being a registered dietitian, I'm also a certified specialist in obesity and weight management. So that's one of the areas that I specialize in and enjoy. And then I'm also a certified diabetes care and education specialist. So I also focus on diabetes as well. And I also am a certified personal trainer. So I love to talk about exercise as well. So that's just a little bit about me. I'm actually based in Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm able to uh, meet people all over the region, the DMV, and across the country um, over our wonderful webinar. So I'm very happy to see everybody today. So let's dive into spices. Now, I know there can be a little bit of stress, a little bit of unknown when it comes to spices. We might have the ones that we are standard that we like to do in our cooking, um, but it might be hard to sort of, you know, think outside the box on how to use all those spices in the store. So we're going to talk about those today. And if you have any you know, go-to spices that you use frequently, let me know in the chat. Let me know what your favorite go-tos are. And at any time, if you have any questions, feel free, you can put them into the chat. And then we'll also uh, talk about any of the questions at the end of the presentation as well. All right. So as we were talking about at the beginning, uh, when we, as we were logging in, a lot of us, we've spent the last year, year and a half, maybe doing a little bit more cooking. And so we sort of dusted off some of those cookbooks, dug through our pantries, and we might have found a few spices in the back of our cabinet that we weren't sure what to do with. So many of us have gotten uh, pretty curious on how to use them, but how do we get started doing that? So let's dive in. All right. So really, when you tune into any of your favorite talk shows or you look on social media or look at the newspaper, you see health benefits of good nutrition all the time. You hear it. It's always promoted uh, and people are really striving to improve their health. But as we can see here, the Food Marketing Institute actually did a survey a few years ago. And it looks like aside from the importance of health, that taste is really a huge factor when it comes to food selection and different purchases. So you can see here uh, that blue is the taste. So taste is at the top of the list on this graph, followed by the price and healthfulness. So really when we think about that number one driver for our preferences, we want them to taste good. And so the great news is by using herbs and spices, you can have your food taste great and be nutritious at the same time. So it's a win-win. All right. So spices are extremely popular. So we use throughout the world, we use about 2 million tons of spices and that's over a billion dollars in sales. So we use quite a bit. And so really the biggest producers of our different spices, India is actually the number one producer, followed by China, Indonesia, and Pakistan. So we definitely get a lot of spices internationally. And the U.S. is actually the world's largest market of spices, and it's continuing to rise. I'm sure if you've been shopping over the last year or so, you might have noticed more flavors, new spices in the store. And that's really because one, we have such a diverse population and lots of wonderful cultures and people want to learn about these, these different cooking methods and traditions. Plus, you know, there's that demand when customers want it, companies are going to deliver. And really just overall learning about the health benefits of spices has also increased that trend and that popularity. So definitely right now we're seeing a lot of wonderful flavors. And what's really interesting, the USDA estimates that Americans on average 
and this always blows my mind, consume about 3.3 pounds of spices on a regular basis, on a yearly basis. So that's quite a bit when you think about it. But do you know what the most popular ones are that we consume? I bet you can guess it. Probably sitting on your table right now. Pepper uh, and mustard seed and salt. So those are the big ones that are very popular. And those are easy to use in recipes. So it kind of makes sense that we eat them the most. All right. So, you know, when we think about it, you know, why do we want to use herbs and spices in our cooking? And we probably know the answer to that. They're a wonderful way to improve flavor and to really give you new tastes. Uh, they can really transform your meals. You know, we could have a, a meal that's kind of bland, but we can add a little sweetness or a little bit of kick to it with our different spice medleys, and it totally transforms it. Plus, you get that aroma. So if you ever walked into your favorite restaurant, you know, that can really, you know, get your, uh, your mouth is salivating. And actually the smells are really the biggest determining factor on whether or not we want to eat a meal. So we've got the flavor and we've got that aroma that really can transform our meals. Plus we can use our different spices to make things brighter or more appealing. And now we see in a lot of different products using ingredients like turmeric to give that natural golden yellow color to products or dishes. And so it's just a really great way to add that flavor uh, and that aroma. Plus, we know that herbs and spices are important as a part of a healthy diet. And so we know from many studies that regular use of herbs and spices can actually help with different chronic conditions, such as cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. And when we think about using our different herbs and spices, we might be swapping uh, those in for things that are maybe less or that may have been less healthy for us. So they're a great way to add wonderful nutrients to our diet. And so we typically think when we think about uh, health benefits, antioxidants, we typically think about fruits and vegetables, but herbs and spices have wonderful sources of antioxidants and polyphenols. So these are these disease fighters. And what they can do, they can protect ourselves from any type of cell damage. Those free radicals are kind of those bad guys. So the antioxidants kind of help come in and keep our body strong. And so we know with a healthy diet of fruits and vegetables, lean proteins and whole grains, we can also add in our wonderful herbs and our spices for that extra dose of antioxidants, which is fabulous. Now, here I have a nice little chart of all of the antioxidants in our different fruits, vegetables, and spices. So here we have on the screen, we have the ORAC values. So this stands for oxygen radical absorbance capacity units. And what it is, it's a measurement of that antioxidant content of our different foods. And this was actually developed by the Institute on Aging. So this really can help bring it all together about how nutritious and nutrition or dense some of our spices are. So on the screen, you can see that the spices are in red, and then we have our fruits and vegetables in gray. So you can see that cinnamon is actually the top rated for antioxidants. And I actually went through my cabinet and I pulled out my cinnamon because I know this is an easy one for me to use in my daily cooking or in my baking. So if you're using anything like cinnamon, turmeric, which I have here as well, uh, you can sprinkle this on your food just for that extra boost of antioxidants and health benefits. And a little goes a long way. So that just shows you the power and how wonderful herbs and spices can be for your diet. Oh, let's see here. I'm gonna pause here. Looks like we've had a couple of questions come in. I'm just gonna stop here for a minute. So that's a great question, Peg. Should we try to buy organic? Truly when it comes to any of your food choices. Um, organic is just the method on how it's farmed and grown. So without pesticides. And really it's a very personal choice. Uh, there can be a difference in price 
overall, the nutritional quality is about the same. So truly, whatever is most important to you, if you're concerned about any type of residue on your foods, you can pur purchase organic. That's just fine. If cost is a, a roadblock, you can buy conventional. Really, the biggest thing is wash your produce, wash your items and try to have some form in your diet rather than no form at all. So let's see. Oh, well, I can double check on the antioxidant content for basil. You're right. It's actually not on that list, but I will find out to see. Definitely you are going to get benefits, but I'll double check to make sure. All right. So one of the great things is that we see that there's a lot of health benefits related to herbs and spices. And we're really lucky because in the Baltimore region, we are home to McCormick Spice. So right up in Timonium, Maryland, not too far from me. And we know them as the spice people. They make all the good things like our old bay. <laughs> but there's also a lot of science involved as well. So there's actually a McCormick Spice Institute that actually looks at the different studies and helps really disseminate the information and the health benefits as well. And so it also has a scientific uh, advisory council as well that really can look at all the different benefits and you know some of the new research that's emerging as well too. So if you're curious about different spices, maybe you hear something online about turmeric or black pepper, this is a great resource that you can utilize. Just visit mcformick.com and you can pull up all of the different studies and research and learn a little bit more about those items. So definitely you, uh, McCormick, you can smell it in the air when you're by the plant, but it's also doing a lot for the research as well. All right. So I talked earlier about, you know, why do we want to use spices? Well, one for that aroma and also for that flavor too. And you can really transform your dishes in just a sprinkle. So the great thing about our different spices is that we can get them all over the world and we can really create either international cuisine or regional cuisine. And just by a few spices, we can have a Southwestern dish, we could have an Indian dish or a Mediterranean dish. So Definitely, if you wanted to spice it up a little bit, we could change our vegetables to a Southwestern vegetable just by adding a little bit of chili powder, uh, cayenne or cumin, just to give it a little spice. So it definitely can really change uh, your recipes in no time. And so one thing that's always fun to do experiment with some of the flavors. So maybe you love to do steamed broccoli a few nights a week for dinner. Try a different medley of spices every time and see how you like them. It really can just elevate that flavor and the pizzazz of the meal. All right, so I'm just gonna see here, we got a couple things. Oh, good questions, all right. Uh, let's see here, a couple things have come in. Oh, one question, how can I use turmeric? So actually turmeric that I have here, you can use it in a variety of different ways. You can put it on popcorn, you can put it on your scrambled eggs. I actually did an event a few years ago and we were sampling turmeric on popcorn and people said they love to put it in their coffee. <laughs> so you can also put it into your milk and make a golden milk, uh, you know, warm beverage on a, on a cold day. So you could try to sprinkle it on different food items and see which one really resonates with you. So there's really no wrong way. All right. Perfect. And then we had one more question. Let's see here. Oh, the different types of salts. Oh, this is a good one. So one of the benefits when we talk about using herbs and spices, it moves us away from adding salt to our meals and adding more salt increases our blood volume and that can increase our blood pressure. So there's a lot of different salts that are out there. We've got our table salt, sea salt, the pink Himalayan, you name, there's a variety. So really when it comes down to it, all of those different salt varieties, they're going to have a little bit of a different flavor and give that little change and flavor to your meals. But overall, they still have the same salt content. So they are going to impact your blood pressure 
the same way. So you can try, you know, those different varieties as well. Some people might use the, the coarse salt in their cooking or the granulated. You can try those different salts. We just want to be really mindful about how much we add just to help keep our sodium content low in our diet. But that's a great question. A lot of people have uh, inquiries about that. All right. So one of the questions that people, you know, think about is, you know, what's the difference between herbs and spices? We sort of, them, sort of hear them mixed together in one combination, but what exactly are they? So really just to differentiate it, we have herbs that are part of uh, low growing shrubs. So they're the leaves. So they can be used fresh or dried, or they could be ground or crushed. So they're just that leaves, uh, those leaves of the plant. So some things that you might um, have basil, caraway, rosemary, celery leaves, those would all be great examples. And then we have our spices. So I've got, I went through my cabinet here. I've got my pepper, my turmeric, let's see, my cinnamon. So we have our different spices and these can actually come from different areas of a plant. So they can come from the bark, the root, the buds, the seeds, or even the berries. So definitely we can get a lot of flavor from different areas of the plant. So for instance, a cinnamon, you're going to get that from the bark of the plant. Uh, ginger is going to be the root. And then things like your berries would be black pepper. So there's a lot of different ways that we can get our uh, wonderful spices from our plants. So definitely can be a little tricky, but hopefully makes it a little bit easier now. Now, what's really interesting about spices is that you can get different spices from the same plant. So like you can get cilantro leaves and coriander seeds from the same plant, but you wouldn't want to use them in the same recipe. They can't be used interchangeably, but it's great that you can get a variety of different items from your plants. And then when we think about it, we can have different seasoning blends. So like McCormick has wonderful blends or Mrs. Dash, they're just a combination of those wonderful herbs and spices. They may have added salt and other items as well too. So that's your herbs and your spices. All right. So one of the other questions, you know, if you've been in the kitchen <laughs> over the last year is, use these? Like what's the best method, method to the madness? So when you're using fresh herbs, sort of the, the general rule is you want to add them near the end of your cooking. So maybe just a minute or two left on the stove before plating or right before that you're serving any of your items. Having a lot of heat for a long time can actually change uh, the flavor and the aroma. So it may not be as potent. And then you have things that are very delicate, like basil or cilantro. Definitely want to toss those on right before serving. That way they're, they're, they're freshest and they have that optimal taste. Now, other things that are not as fragile, like rosemary or thyme, you can actually add those in about 20 to 30 minutes uh, before serving because they're a little bit hardier and they can handle that heat. Now we have dried spices as well too, and there's a lot of different ways that you can use them. And so, you know, our dried spices are going to release flavors uh, slower than some of the crumbled or the ground ones. So definitely if you're using things like stews or soups, you want to make sure that you're using them at the right time. That way they can give you that optimal flavor. And then definitely you want to make sure that if you throw any hearty herbs into your cooking, maybe like a bay leaf, uh, you want to pull those out right before cooking. That way it doesn't accidentally get consumed because it can be a little bit scratchy <laughs> on your throat. Now we also have our ground spices. And so these are going to give you lots of flavor pretty quickly. So think about fresh ground pepper. Um, they're actually going to give you more flavor in that ground or in that solid form if you grind them at the time of cooking than if you were to purchase them ground. So you can keep that, that pepper grinder nearby for that optimal flavor. And then you can also use a combination of 
dried and fresh spices. So right now, think about like your picnic potato salad. You can add some dried and some fresh herbs. You can dry, add some of that dried as it's marinating in the refrigerator. And then you can add some of that fresh right before serving. All right, perfect. And then one last question that's frequent, uh, frequently asked, and I have stumbled on this in my own kitchen is, can I use dried and fresh interchangeably? <laughs> if you ever come up on this, it's kind of hard to guess. So you can. So the general rule, if you're swapping out dried for fresh herbs is to use a third of the amount called for in the recipe. So if you have a recipe that calls for a tablespoon of fresh rosemary, then you would want to use a teaspoon of the dried rosemary. So just a little bit. So, and the same rule applies in reverse. So if you, if a recipe calls for a teaspoon of dried parsley, then you would add a tablespoon. So you can always add more too, if you like that extra flavor, but that's just a quick rule of thumb. If you have a recipe and you have the dried version and not the fresh. All right, so the shelf life. Now, uh, at the beginning of the, actually before we started the presentation, I was talking earlier uh, during COVID, I know my mom did an audit of their spice pantry and I'm sure probably many of you have done it as well. Um, we might have some spices that we might buy for Thanksgiving uh, once a year and may not use them for quite a bit. Maybe it's just that yearly event. Um, and so a question that comes up frequently is, how long can I keep these in my pantry? So I remember growing up in my house, we would stumble on some pretty old ones. <laughs> so really when you think about your herbs and spaces, you know, really they just start to lose their potency and their aroma and their flavor as the years pass by. So as a general rule, you know, we want to keep herbs less than three years. And if you have any spices, generally if they're ground about three years or less, or if you have any whole spices, you can keep them for about four years or so. And then if you have anything like a uh, Mrs. Dash medley or McCormick medley, typically about two years. So, you know, if you have anything that's a little bit longer, it may not just provide, it may not provide all of that flavor that you're used to. Now, there are some things that can last for a long time. Vanilla extract, actually, you can keep indefinitely along with salt. So those are things that you can keep in your pantry for, for years to come. Other extracts like almond extract, usually about four years or so. So I know that's always a question that comes up. Is this safe to use? So one of the best ways to do to keep organized, keep a list and inventory of what you have in your spice cabinet, you know, what, and put the date on when you opened it. That way, you know how long it has been opened in your pantry. And if you have that list, then that you can check it before uh, shopping for a recipe. So you don't add up with multiples of one type of spice. All right, let's see here. We had a couple other questions come in. Oh, we had one question about freezing. We're gonna talk about that in just a moment. Absolutely, we'll talk about how you can freeze basil. Let's see here. Does pepper lower your immune system? So, you know, really, when you think about your immune system, that's the, that's your way of your body defending against uh, invaders. So adding pepper to your meals is just going to give you flavor, and just another boost of those antioxidants. And the expiration dates. <laughs> so definitely, if you have an item in your pantry that's un opened. Generally, those expiration dates, and let's see if I have one on my packages here. Let's see here. For example, this uh, Old Bay seasoning says best if used by April 15th of 2020. So what the manufacturer is doing, uh, they're providing a date when that product is going to have the best quality. Now, it's not a safety date. It's just that flavor, uh, when the flavor is going to be the best. So if this was unopened, 
I probably could use it after that use by date and it would still have a pretty good taste. Now this container has been open for a while. So because of that, it probably isn't as flavorful as it used to be. And it looks by the date on this, maybe it might be time to get a new one. So definitely you can use those dates as a reference, but you know, use that rule of thumb. How long has it been opened? Good question. All right. Now, one thing I know that can be a frustration if you purchase uh, 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 items for a recipe, maybe fresh herbs, and they start to wilt in your refrigerator. I run into this quite a bit when, it, when I buy cilantro or basil. It usually doesn't stand very long in my refrigerator. And so what you can do, if you have items that are tender herbs, so things like basil or parsley or mint or dill or the cilantro, what you can do if you want to keep them in your refrigerator, you could actually use them and put them in a little uh, glass of water, about an inch at the bottom. So think about a bouquet of your herbs and you can put them in your refrigerator. You can put a plastic bag over them or depending on the size of the jar, you can put a lid on it and keep it in your refrigerator. So that's a way to keep those tender herbs uh, longer in your refrigerator. And they can last anywhere from two to three weeks. So that's a great way to extend the shelf life. There's been many times where I've gone through my refrigerator and my cilantro has become quite wilted. So this is a great way to prevent that. Now, some of your hearty items, um, items that have a thick stem like rosemary, um, what you can do, you can actually roll them in a paper towel and something that's damp and then put them into a, a Ziploc bag and you can keep those in your refrigerator for about one to three weeks as well too. So that would be another way that you can extend that shelf life. So rosemary, thyme, sage, all those hearty items, you can keep them. Just think of it as like an herb, a little burrito of herbs. <laughs> so that is an easy way to preserve them. Now we did have a question about freezing and you can actually freeze your herbs, which is really fascinating. So if you have something like basil or mint, what you can, there's a couple methods that you can do. You can dice them up. You can put them on a cookie sheet to freeze, and then you can put them into a Ziploc bag, take the air out of it, and then you're good to go. You can also put the diced spices in that Ziploc bag and put in the freezer as well. So you can use them. Now, another method that you can do, if you have any ice cube trays, you can dice up the herb that you have and then put them into individual ice cube trays, add a little bit of water, or you could use a little bit of olive oil, your favorite cooking oil, let them freeze in the ice cube tray. And then you can actually leave them in there or you can put them into a Ziploc bag. And then you can just toss them into your cooking when you're ready to use. So it's pretty a uh, great way to extend the life of those items. So definitely a fun way that you can have lots of items right in your freezer ready to go. All right. And so many times I know it can be confusing. We're not sure what to pair with what type of food. So here on the next two slides, I actually have two wonderful charts Feel free to take a screenshot of this if you'd like. And if you're looking for different ways to just sort of bring a little pizzazz to your meal, you can use this as a great reference. So maybe tonight you're grilling fish. All right, well, how can we change up our flavor just a little bit? So some great spices that pair well with fish would be curry or dill or marjoram or paprika. So just a sprinkle of that can really transform the dish. Same thing with chicken. I know a lot of us, we use chicken frequently in a lot of different meals, but how can we take it up a notch? We can add in some ginger, maybe for a stir fry or rosemary or thyme and just get that nice hearty flavor in there as well. So definitely a great resource when you're looking for what's the right spice to pair with my meal. Now, if you have any wonderful cookbooks in your kitchen, there is normally a spice directory in the back that will give a nice overview of the spice and what pairs well with that item. So two great resources you can utilize.
And on the next slide here, we have some of our vegetables. So we have sort of a funny saying with the nutritionist team. Uh, someone said once, you know what? Your vegetables aren't boring. <laughs> you are. So when we think about our vegetables, sometimes they can be a little underwhelming. So there are wonderful spice varieties that you can add to just add life to your dish. So whether you're cooking with carrots or corn or green beans or maybe uh, pumpkins, mm -hmm. then that would be great additions to add to your meal. So think about if you had some steamed carrots, sprinkle some cinnamon or some cloves on your carrots just to bring that extra flavor. Or maybe you have corn on the cob tonight for dinner. Gosh, maybe a little bit of onion powder would just take it to the next level. So you can definitely try a variety of different spices when you're using your vegetables. And also think about the way that you're preparing them too. You can roast your vegetables with a little bit of olive oil. I love to put on some blackening season with my vegetables. So I'll take some broccoli, carrots, beans, mix it all together on a cookie sheet, and then add my spices. And it really gives it wonderful flavor. So many, many ways you can just amp up those vegetables. And then of course, too, we have things like tomatoes. I'll tell you what's really, really good putting a little bit of blackening season on your tomatoes, or even a little bit of the old bay for a nice savory addition to a meal. So feel free to take a screenshot or a picture of those as well. And I'll also send out a copy of today's presentation so you can reference these too as well. All right, and so one other thing that we can think about when it comes to herbs and spices it are ways to improve our health but give us flavor at the same time. So there are many different spices, many different ways to really amp up a dish. And we actually have great options to add sweetness to our meals. So we know that sugar is very popular uh, in our culture and for our recipes. And really the recommendation is that we should have about six teaspoons of less of sugar a day. So if you're doing any cooking or baking, a couple of things that you can do, you can decrease that sugar in your baked goods, or you can add in some spices that give that sweet flavor. So things like anise, cardamom, or cinnamon, that's a great way to get that natural sweetness and not that sweetness that has calories. So just a great way to kind of transform uh, your meal. And one thing that's great you can try if you would like to do some uh, experimenting applesauce is a great option. So I love to get unsweetened applesauce and I might put uh, a little bit of mint or anise or cinnamon and give it a different try and see how I like the flavor. I also like to heat it up in the winter when it's a little bit warmer and it's very savory. So think about your spices as ways to decrease that sugar in your diet. And then we talked earlier about that sodium. So this is a big area. So the dietary guidelines for Americans recommend that we should have less than 2,300 milligrams of sodium a day. So that's about a teaspoon. So many of us, if we're managing high blood pressure or over, over the age of 50, actually the American Heart Association says we should have less sodium as low as 1,500 milligrams a day for our heart health. So when we decrease that sodium, it's a great opportunity to add flavor to our meals with those spices. So as people are maybe making this transition to lessening the salt in their diet, there's lots of things you can do to add bite and have that savory taste as well too. So we think of these as swappertunities at Giant. So if you're looking for a savory dish, maybe instead of using salt, you add black pepper or basil or garlic powder. Or if you wanna get a little kick to your meal, add a little, a little bit of cayenne. And there's lots of ways, again, to have that flavor and less sodium. So definitely these are great if you're trying to get less salt in your diet. All right, just gonna stop here for just a second. And it looks like we got a couple of things that came in. Yeah, actually, so Nita, you can actually, for every one 
quarter cup of sugar that you decrease in your recipe, it lessens the calorie load by 175 calories. So you can easily cut the sugar in your recipes in half. And many times people don't notice the difference. So absolutely, you could also add a touch of honey or whatever you prefer to your recipes. Absolutely, just a way to cut it and also just get a little flavor at the same time. That's awesome. Oh, and lemon pepper on the tomato. That sounds good as well. <laughs> so there are lots of options in this store when you're walking down this spice aisle. So I just wanted to highlight a few that are handpicked by the nutritionist team. And there's lots of wonderful options. So these are just some of many. So when we're talking about fresh herbs, actually, we have a local company. We have Bowery Farming that's actually uh, local to our region. They have a warehouse in White, White Marsh, Maryland. And Bowery, if you're not familiar with it, they are actually a vertical indoor garden. They grow all of their leafy greens hydroponically, and they grow them under specific lights, in specific amounts of water. And so there's no pesticides and it's a very controlled environment. And for this, it provides a flavorful, great tasting leafy green. So their basil is quite flavorful. So a great thing that you could add to your meals. Other things that you can add, uh, we are, I know everything but the bagel spice is quite popular. Mrs. Dash actually makes one with everything but the salt. So you have that wonderful seasoning medley without all that sodium. And also too, McCormick makes their perfect pinch varieties. So lemon pepper, uh, you know, a spicy Southwestern mix. So you get a variety of flavors without that sodium too. And then we also have other herbs and rubs that you can use in your cooking. So maybe if you're grilling out this season, you can put a rub on your meat to provide some flavor as well. So lots of wonderful things that you can look for in those spice areas. And then we always want to make it easy. Simple, less fuss, right? So there are a lot of convenient things that are ready to go. So Gourmet Garden, this is a wonderful brand. They're actually in the produce section uh, next to uh, some of the prepped vegetables. And they have a wonderful array of slightly dried herbs. And they also have a paste that's ready to go. So you don't have to do any dicing. So if you want basil or mint, you can pick up the dried variety or the item that's already in the tube add it to your uh, saute pan or whatever you're cooking, and it'll last about four weeks in the refrigerator opened. So it's definitely something fun that makes it much quicker in the kitchen. Also something that's helpful too, if you're in a hurry, we have our one skillet and our sheet pan meal medleys as well. So these are made by McCormick. So all you have to do is pick out your favorite protein and your favorite vegetable, and then pick out your favorite spice medley. And these come in a wide variety of flavors. These do have added salt. So you do would wanna be mindful of how much you're using uh, that, so it meets within your wellness goals as well. And we also have other things we have, it's called Timid Pepper, and it's actually a really hot type of pepper. So if you're looking for a little bit of extra kick to your meals, this could be another spice that you could add if you've got any uh, heat addicts in your house. So lots of wonderful things that you can look for in that spice aisle. All right. All right. And then lastly, before we have any questions or I finish up any of the uh, things in the q and just want to tell you a little bit about what we do at Giant. So we have a team of 10 nutritionists on our healthy living team, and we provide free services. So we have free consultations by phone or virtually by Zoom. We also teach a variety of free classes that are on our website at giantfood.com slash nutrition. So if you're thinking about finding ways to meal plan or maybe reduce your salt, we have wonderful presentations on eating for heart health, meal planning, and staying within a budget. So really something for everyone. And then if you're on social media, join our Healthy Living by Giant Facebook group. So it's a great way for us to get to know our customers and we get to know you. And so we provide lots of inspiration, new items that are in store, recipes and ways to help you meet your wellness goals. So it's definitely a fun resource.
And then lastly, on our website, we have our Nutrition Made Easy podcast. And we actually have a wonderful episode uh, that's with the head chef at McCormick um, that talks about some of the inner workings of McCormick and how to use your spices in your recipes too. So I highly recommend that if you're very interested in this topic. We also have a variety of other wonderful episodes Uh, things on heart health, new products in the store. We just uh, released one on sun safety for summer. So truly something for everyone. All right, well, I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna pull up and see if we have any other questions that have come in. Uh, Great one so far. Oh, this is actually, I never thought to do this, black pepper uh, and butter on toast. I bet that just gives it a nice little, little kick. Huh, all right, so something to think about. All right. Great questions. So definitely feel free, anything you would like to know more about, let me know, even if it's not on today's topic, that's okay too. I'm happy to answer anything. And if you have any questions after today, I will actually put in my email address into the chat. um, And that way you can feel free to reach out. Let's see here. All right. Great. Well, I appreciate everybody's time today. I hope you're staying cool uh, (laughs) in this hot weather. And uh, I'll stay on the line for a few more minutes. Um, If uh, you don't have any questions, I hope to see you again. Provence, uh, uh, safe after a long time. I would say if it's opened, it probably is going to start losing its potency uh, after probably anywhere from like one to two years. So it's probably fine to consume, but it might not have that that flavor. So uh, that's a wonderful spice to choose. Mm-hmm. Micro or can you tell me a little bit more about that that question, Kathy? Anything in particular? No, I just went to the farmer's market and somebody mm-hmm. was there with microgreens and um, I just really didn't understand. And we tasted a few and I was just curious what they might be good in. Oh, microgreens. Well, let's see here. Um, actually, let's see. They're just young. Okay. I actually, ha- I hadn't even heard that term before. So these are actually just uh, young vegetable greens. They have an aromatic flavor. Let's see. Gosh, you could use them in how you would use really like any, any vegetable. You could add them to eggs or casserole or soup. And how do they taste? Do they have a strong flavor or uh, are they nutty? I'm Um, quite intrigued. Well, the ones that we tasted, the peas tasted like peas. Okay. Um, And then the others were like they tasted green. (laughs) 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 Yes, yes. Okay. So, okay. So I actually had to do a quick uh, search. So they're somewhere between sprouts and baby uh, leaf vegetables. So you could actually use them. You could put them on a sandwich. You could put them on a salad. Um, I always love, like if you're making um, an omelet, you could throw them in to see as well. Um, It sounds really interesting. I'll have to look for these and do a little bit more research. Uh, You can use your creativity and see how it goes. I learned something new today. (laughs) Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a question if you have a minute. Sure. Do you do do a lot of grilling of fish? You mentioned it earlier. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, For myself, I do Mm -hmm. occasionally. I know it's a quick way for people to have a nice meal. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grill some halibut today. Okay. Do you have any suggestions? 
Yeah, halibut. So um, really you could do something like dill. That would be a good option. Are there any spices that you've used in the past? Oh, well, there's certain ones I know my family really likes. So okay, we really well, that's like, important. Yeah, we really like <laughs> oregano and thyme and garlic and pepper. Yeah, so you could do, and actually you could do a little experiment. You could actually take, um, if you have a couple of fillets, you could try a couple of different varieties, uh, maybe put one on each item and see how everyone likes the flavor. Or you could do that's one that's a medley. And then just sort of do like a, a taste test. And that way, then you know, okay, we can ixnay maybe the oregano or whatever uh, the next time. Uh, and kind of a fun conversation piece too. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, Thanks. halibut sounds good. Absolutely. Great questions. See, looks like I got all of the, the questions. Great. Well, definitely, you can always feel free to reach out to me. Uh, we also have our, gener our general email. It's nutrition at giant food. So you feel free to use that email or my email. Any questions, I'm happy to answer. If I don't know, I'm going to find out because I've learned a lot today. 